90x net scalar training to the extreme in this episode we're going to do some simple load balancing we're going to start simple and gradually get more complicated so let's get started okay here i've got my zen center console i've got my virtual net scalar running right here and I, we have three servers that we want to load balance they all have the same content on them let's get into our gui for the net scalar First thing we need to do is go into load balancing. Notice these blue exclamation marks. They let you know that the feature is not enabled. It's a great reminder. What we can also do is right click on that feature. This dialog will pop up and I can say enable load balancing features. I'll click on the load balancing folder. And for the sake of simplicity, to show you how easy it is, let's run the load balancing wizard under the getting started Introduction. Let's click Next. Now we need to create our services, and the service actually is what's monitoring the back end. So let's create a service red. I need to create a new, let's call it red. One forty one and click create. Now I've created the red web service. Uh, it's port protocol HTTP, as you can see, port 80. And I'm going to add it to my configured services. And you can see the state is up. I need to create a new one, red, green. And click Create. Now I've got a green, a green server. I'm going to add that. Green is currently showing as down. I'm not sure why. We'll we'll figure that out later. Uh, okay, blue. And add that to the pool. Okay, let's click next. And now I need to add a virtual server. The virtual server is the public endpoint that users are going to come to. This is where DNS is going to resolve to this IP address. So I'm going to call that VIP load balance and click next and finish. Exit the wizard. Okay. Configuration summary. I've got one load balancing virtual server, three services. That's what we just created. So that's a good quick review. It should, should be up. And oh, here, here we go. In the, in the last wizard, it shows you available services and configured services, and I didn't activate them. Let's go ahead and activate the services that we want as part of this load balancing. So now my VIP is listed as up because at least one of my services is responding. Let's take a look at these services. I realize why this green server is not coming up. Uh, it's the wrong IP address. So it's an example for troubleshooting. What I need to do is delete this service and replace it with the appropriate one. So remove it. I'll remove this service. It's gone. And the green server also remove it. So now that I've deleted the improperly created service and the server. I'll create a new server called green 142. I've got it correct this time. Create the server. Okay. Go to my services. Add a new service. Select the appropriate server, which is the green one. TCP default. Okay. Looks good. Edit the server. Okay, now we've got three services up. So now I've got now I've got all my services up. I need to go back to my virtual server and add green into the mix. Okay, so now I have red, blue, and green uh, 
being load balanced by this virtual IP. Click OK. And let's go to our public endpoint, 144, refresh. Red, blue, green, red, blue, green. Okay, this is exactly what we'd expect to see. Uh, we've got um, round robin configuration by default. And every time a new connection comes in, it's going to cycle through the various backend servers, load balance them against the backend servers. Now that's great if you've got static websites. You don't need persistency. But most websites now require some sort of persistency or stickiness. When you connect to a web server, you want to stay on that web server for the duration of your connection. Okay? So how do we, how do, we do that? Let's talk about persistence. Let's, let's get that set up. So if we go back to load balancing the virtual servers, double click on your virtual server, click on method and persistence tab, and here's your method, least connections. Uh, least connections is the default connection, but as you can see here, um, the current method will be round robin. Okay, so what happens on the NetScaler is this. Regardless of what load balancing method you select, NetScaler will always use round robin initially, but let's say roughly 400 connections. Uh, what it's doing is it's identifying and sensing the actual capacity of the backend servers. When it invokes your load balancing method, it has a better idea of the capacity. I'm going to actually set this to round robin for our purpose. Now, persistence. We talked about persistence, the need for persistence. If you do cookie insert and set the timeout value to zero, the NetScaler will create a small load balancing cookie for this session. And every time the client reconnects, the client will send this cookie. The NetScaler will decrypt this cookie, look at it, and know exactly which backend server you need to go to. This is the preferred method and actually best practice. As a backup persistence for people who either do not have cookies enabled or have a browser that does not support cookies, source IP. And you can set whatever timeout you want. I'll leave, it, I'll leave it at two minutes for now. Click OK. And now we've set up load balancing and persistence. And let's go back to our endpoint and start refreshing. See what happens. Now, notice that I set the persistence, right, to cookie, cookie insert. Now that I'm on the red server, cookie has been set, and no matter how many times I click on this refresh button, I'm going to stay persistent to the red server. That's what we expect, and that's what you want in this scenario. But what happens if the red server goes down? So let's do that. Let's actually take out, uh, disable. We can administratively disable the red server. Red server is going to go down. There we go. It's now marked out of service. And we go back to our site, refresh. We're instantly taken to another server. In this case, the green server. A new persistency has been applied. And now I am persistent on the green server. Let's say after some time, the red server comes back. I enable it, it's back. Now even though the red server has come back online, because my persistence cookie has sent me to the green server, and the green server is still healthy, when I hit refresh, I still stay on the green server. This is what we want, this is what's expected, and this is what the NetScaler is doing for you. So in this example we've seen simple load balancing using the load balancing wizard, We've also seen fixing of an error of the configuration where I had the wrong IP address. And we've said persistency to cookie insert. So I hope this has been helpful for you. And then the next video, we'll do some more complicated load balancing.